All right, in this video, what we're going to do is uh, we've got a condensate pump sitting here. We're going to do a complete pump change out on this whole unit, and hopefully I can save you some time uh, by changing it out in a specific way. We'll kind of do it in steps so you can see what I'm doing and uh, hopefully save you a half an hour's time when you go to change one of these things out. So again, get to get started, make sure that you lock out the pump and the motor. No electricity to it whatsoever because we've got a, some wiring to do. Make sure you reroute your condensate. Make sure there's no hot water coming to this thing and make sure it's touchable. All right, we've got everything cooled down. The electrical's locked out. Now we'll uh, start tearing this thing apart and hopefully I can save you some time. So what I'm gonna start with is getting rid of the electrical wires on the motor because no matter what, how, what way we do it or how we do it, we're gonna have to rewire a new motor. So there's a little entrance point into the motor here. And we'll just get the cover off. We'll set the screws aside just in case we need them on the new one. This just slides right off. We'll set it aside. There's a little rubber gasket on here. Keep some of the moisture out that other screw out and set that aside with the rubber gasket. And then what we'll do is, if Josh you can get in here, there's two wires coming from the float switch that you have to worry about, okay? Which is the black and the white. All we're going to do is remove them and remember where they came from. I don't know if the camera is picking it up or not, but black should be wired to number four and white should be wired to number one black four, white one. All right, so I'll just grab a pair of pliers. You can use a small screwdriver too sometimes on these. You can just pop them right off. They're a little corroded. You might be better off using a pair of pliers so you don't twist these tabs off of here. And just pop them off and we'll just let them hang there. All right, we're gonna have to unthread this to get this to pull out so we can attach it to the new motor. So what we'll do is we'll take these out. Usually you just have to loosen these and this little clip here will pop out and then you can remove that little elbow. All right, it's not gonna let me just loosen them. They've changed it since the last time I've worked on them. You're gonna have to remove these screws all the way. So we'll just let them sit here for now. All right. Now keep this because you're going to reuse this. And I'll put the screws with it and I'll set it aside. And then we'll pull the wires through one at a time because of the spade clips that are on there. You usually can't get both of them through at the same time. Well, I guess I did. All right, so there's your wiring. I'm just going to wrap it around the float and then get into taking this thing off of the tank. All right, we've got the electrical disconnected from the float switch. And I've got it wrapped out of the way. Now let's get this knuckle off of here. And it just unscrews, and then there's kind of a tightening ring on it. When you're unscrewing it, it doesn't come into play. twist it off and save this because we'll put it on the new one too. All right. So I'll set that aside. All right. Now there's two ways of doing this. If you are replacing the identical pump that B&G makes with this, and it's kind of tricky to know until you get into it, but the way I'm going to show you how to do this, you won't have to remove the pipe. You can use the existing volute and just plop your new assembly into this volute. We'll take it that far and I'll still remove this volute once I show you what I'm doing. But for now, let's get this assembly taken out and I'll bring the new one in and we'll take that apart and plop the new one in and we'll go from there. All right, we're gonna take the whole pump assembly out of the volute and I'm gonna leave the volute bolted up and I'll bring in the other complete pump and I'll show you what I mean. So we'll get these bolts loose. All 
All right, so I've got all four of these loose. So what I'll do is I'm going to lift that whole motor and pump assembly up, and then I'll show you what I'm going to do. So we'll just lift it up and set it right over here. So we're doing a complete pump change out, but I'm going to show you how to save or keep the exact how to keep the existing volute in line. So I'm going to go and get the other pump. And the complete pump comes in a nice big box like this. It comes with the tank gasket. Directions. Don't use them. Some foam. They pack them real nice. Because we know how the shipping companies are. They wreck everything. All right, we'll plop this on the table. Now, as you've seen, the volute comes with it, with the pump tag and the whole nine yards. If you're using the identical volute that's on the condensate pump, you don't have to replace this and do pipe work if that's the way you want to do it. If you don't want to do it, go ahead and skip ahead in, in the video when I start taking this off the tank. But for for the video for right now, I'm going to remove these four bolts and pull it out of the volute. And then we'll just drop it in the existing volute and that's where you can start putting it back together and you've got the whole new assembly and you've got an extra volute for maybe another time. All right, so I've got the new pump assembly pulled out of the brand new volute, but to save you some time, we're just going to use the new pump assembly and not the volute. We're going to leave the existing one in place. The only thing that you have to do is you have to inspect this volute to make sure there's no debris in here. It's nice and clean to accept the new pump assembly. And of course, you get a gasket and you can use it. You can reuse the old one, maybe put a little silicone on it, just a little to coat it to keep it stuck in place. Or use the new one that comes off of the new pump assembly and that's what I'm doing. So I'm just gonna plop this gasket in and just take the new assembly and put it back together. So I'm just going to, for, for the sake of the video, I'm just going to drop it in there because we are doing it with the existing volute. They're identical. So I can leave it just like this, bolt it up, and be on my way in half the time instead of taking apart the piping and this, uh, the volute from the tank, new gasket, and all the other fun stuff. At this point in time, you can start putting it back together, or you can fast forward in the video and see how I do that after I do the complete pump change out and then we'll just go from here and you can watch. All right, for you for those of you who stuck around to watch the complete pull out of the pump, this one's th we'll pretend that this is the bad one and we're going to pull the whole thing apart. <clears throat> so the way to start is obviously you're going to have to change your pipe. You're going to have to pull the whole thing away from the tank. We just have a little mock up of a union here that we put on and I'm just going to disconnect it. And of course, yours could be different, it could be the same, but I'm just going to set this aside like it's going out to your system. So you've got a piece of pipe on here, the whole nine yards, but you're ready to tear the whole thing apart. What we do is we just loosen these four bolts. Now there is a little bit of a time saver here that I can show you how to do this also. And I'll show you here shortly. On my way back around, I'll grab the new pump and kind of explain what I'm going to be doing. So we've got these loose. Because this is the tight spot in here, I like to remove the top one and set it right next to the pump and I like to loosen the bottom one and I'll show you why in a second. Go to the other side here and I'll grab the pump and the gasket. All right, so here's the new pump. Here's the new gasket. Now, you've got everything disconnected so I remove the top one. If you notice, it wants to wiggle a little. So you've got the top one out and you've got the bottom one loosened. Now, I'll leave it sit like that and we'll go to the new one. If you notice the way B and G does it, the 
They put notches in their flanges. They're not complete circle flanges. So they make it easy for you to come over to the condensate pump and just lift it off. Okay, so we'll set it aside. And if you notice, the nuts and bolts are still here and you can get to them. You can either loosen these and pull them out and pull the tank gasket off. Okay, you can do that that way. Or you can leave them on and then cut the gasket to fit the flanges, like so. Because the only real integrity of the gasket to the, to the volute on the pump itself is this square. If you wanted to leave the bolts in place and just rip the old gasket off and cut notches in here and just drop the whole assembly in place, you can do it that way. Which I'm going to do, but seeing so I've got the two bottom ones out, I'll put the gasket on first with the two bottom bolts and then put the new pump assembly in its place. All right, we're ready to put the new pump onto the old tank. Um, before you go any farther, what I suggest to you is, is we all know how condensate is rotten water. It's horrible. If you're having problems with seals or you're losing a lot of motors lately or seals, take a look inside the tank. Look on the bottom of that tank and see if it's shaling or it's rusty. Get a garden hose and hose this thing out. Get it cleaned out for the new pump so you don't have any problems with the new pump. Just make sure all of the gunk that's inside this tank is flushed. Then we can install the new pump. All right, we've got the new pump ready to go in. We've cleaned this up. The surface where the gasket goes is clean. I put the pipe that connects to the union in the discharge end uh, on the pump. Now it's time to put the gasket in place. So like I said, I'm just gonna do it this way because the bolts were already out. Just insert the bolts. Just makes it a little bit easier when they drop the pump in place, the gasket's gonna stay put. So we'll get that started. All right, whenever you're ready, Josh, I'm gonna lift it into place. Try to keep you in the loop here. All right, so we'll grab the pump and we'll put it the way it's supposed to go. And I'll set it right here. Make sure the gasket's in place. And if you're having a problem like I am with the gasket where it's a little bit bowed, you can put a little bit of silicone to make it stick. It's not gonna hurt it any. Just make sure you don't use too much. Now, I take the condensate pump flanges in very carefully. I get it past the hex head and drop it down and let the bolts hold on to the flange. Then I take my upper bolt and rock it forward through the hole on the gasket and hand tighten it. And it stays right where it is. Josh, I'm gonna walk around the table and do the other one. Might have to wiggle it a little bit, but land your way. All right, You've got that finger tight. And then you can wiggle a little bit and finger tighten the bottom ones, like so. Now, if you notice, a lot of times alignment comes into play when you mate flanges to tanks. In this scenario, again, because they notch that volute, you can just leave it rest on those two bottom bolts and that gasket's not going anywhere and the two surfaces will meet and you'll pinch that gasket in there real nice. So, at this point in time, we'll just tighten up the flange to the tank. And again, be careful, it's only a cast piece. So you don't wanna over tighten these, just mush the gasket because you can snap these ears off. And you don't wanna snap the ears off because it's very expensive. All right, at this point in time, what I suggest you do is you're, you're bolted up to the tank. What I suggest you do here is hook up your pipe to the pump before you wire it or before you do anything. The reason being, once you hook up this pipe, 
you can water test it to make sure nothing's going to leak and then we can go through and wire it and make sure it's working properly and then you'll be done with it. All right, so we opened up the valves and tested it and made sure that it's not leaking, everything's fine. Now we can go back and wire up the float switch. Again, be careful, make sure you've drained it somehow or waited till it cooled down and you isolated the condensate again because it will get hot fast. This cast iron is, transfers heat real well. So what we'll do is we'll start to get the electrical box put back together, we'll get it wired and we'll go from there. All right, so let's get this thing wired up. We'll go back and get all the parts off of the motor. We'll have them readily available. So the first thing you want to do is you want to put that funny elbow back in the motor. Now this is like a tightening nut and it's adjustable and you'll see once I get into it how it works. But I put it all the way to the end and now we just thread it into the motor. Put some constant pressure on it. All right, now this tightening nut can be tricky. So you want the electrical down the way you had it and it's in place and you can't make a full circle like so. I might make it. Okay, I made it. It's still a little loose. So we can take that little tightening nut and just hit one of the ridges and it's tight, okay? So now we can bring the wire back in and we'll run it through the opening. And again, probably one at a time because those spade clips can be a bear. You know what, I'll grab a screwdriver help them up. All right. And then because I don't want it to fall, I'll put them on their right spades. Black to four, white to one. Look down. There's one. White goes to one. Give them a shove on there. Black to four. Give them a shove on there. Grab your pliers. And just make sure they're on the terminals good. Need good connection. All right, so you've got it wired. It's ready to go. Now, kind of hold that conduit in place. and Put that hood back on. There's a little tab on the top of that. Josh, I don't know if you want that down here. Right here. Okay. It'll go in this groove right here. And I'll show you as long as you've got a close up there. Do this. And then bring it and push it in. And then you grab your two screws. Get them started so that clip doesn't fall out. I'll grab this one. Okay, we've got it put back together. And now we'll put the head, the cover for the motor back on. So we'll start here with this rubber gasket and put it into place. Oh, I got it upside down. Put it into place here. And then we'll grab one nut, make that stationary. Let me get my screwdriver here. Just start it, okay? Then you can bring the cover in. What you can do is that little slide notch, you just slide notch it in there and then set the other side in place, grab your other screw and tighten it down. All right, your new pump assembly is in, it's wired, you can fill it up, check again for leaks. Let the float switch kick it in and start it up with the power and you're ready to pump some condensate and I'm going to smoke. <laughs>